Hello, and thank you for joining us. Uh, this is the Miro Consulting webinar on Microsoft licensing and audits uh, changes due to the new co-pilot uh, being released. We're going to begin the webinar in just about one minute. We're just going to give everyone a chance to log in. Hello again, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're gonna begin the presentation in just about 30 seconds. We're just giving everyone a chance to log in. All right, hello, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Sean Donahue. I am the VP of Marketing here at Miro Consulting. And welcome to our webinar on the changes to Microsoft licensing and audits from the new co-pilot. Uh, we're hoping to help you know the rules, know the changes, know the costs, know the benefits, and know how not to trigger an audit. Uh, with me today presenting is our senior Microsoft licensing expert, Vince Allison. Uh, you go to the next slide, Vince. Uh, and Vince has been with us for uh, been with us for many years. He's been uh, working on Microsoft licensing. Uh, for 28 years now. So he's really the go-to guy uh, in terms of what you want to know. He prepared this presentation uh, and we'll get into it in just a moment. Vince, can you go to the next slide? So just real quick, so you know who we are, we're Miro Consulting and we're a leading global provider of software asset management, subscription management services. And we do that for Oracle, Microsoft, IBM, uh, Amazon Web Services and Salesforce. Uh, we help our clients uh, uh, Excuse me. We help our clients with their licensing and making sure they're in compliance. We help with audit advisory, negotiation tactics, support management, and cloud services. One of the best things we're good at is reducing your costs. So if you want to get your costs down with any of those vendors, let us know. Uh, we are on a mission to help our clients maximize their ROI on their software license and subscription investments, stay in compliance, and negotiate successful contracts and audit settlements. And the big important remember to take this away uh, about Miro is that we have a performance guarantee, no risk performance guarantee, where uh, your cost savings will be more than our fees. Uh, we're the only organization in the industry that makes this offer. Uh, so working with us is risk free. Uh, and with that, I will turn it over to Vince to begin the content. Thank you, Vince. Thank you, Sean. Microsoft Copilot, there's, um, as you watch technology, there's the demand for AI and how AI can work with products and through different services, either publishers or even you know, companies have out there that you can use it to help help with your business. Um, Microsoft is in it. Their name is, the, the name they gave that AI is Copilot. And it works with a bunch of different Microsoft products that are out there. And what they're doing is they want to expand their uh, product base as well as add licensing options that are out there to help you obtain and purchase uh, that solution. Some of the benefits that you get for Copilot is the architecture with it is the same for all the different designs and all the different solutions through Microsoft products. So, uh, you know, it's one of those, if you know how to do it, if you're making something to work with it, it should work with it regardless of the Microsoft product uh, that you're using. Copilot can also use some of the different language models. So what happens is you have an end user that speaks a different language than, you know, than English or say Spanish. It allows you to use the different models out there. It helps the, um, the translation that's there, and it really helps that end user experience that's, uh, that's with it. The other thing to note is Microsoft uses Azure to host the Copilot tools that you would use, the Microsoft you know, cloud version of, of supporting the products. So when you, when you get Azure, when you buy some of these, just understand that it's gonna be Azure based on there. The thing I like to point that out is that Azure, when you're using Azure, because it's being hosted at Microsoft, here's where we can start something very basic like this, can potentially start becoming licensing concerns. If there's a change in Copilot licensing, if there's a change in the other Microsoft products you're using that's based in Azure, a lot of times because it's subscription, these, th these changes happen automatically. And by a simple change with Microsoft that maybe you didn't get notified from either a reseller or Microsoft, you didn't, the notification didn't go out, you can suddenly find yourself to be non-compliant and under-licensed. So some examples 
of Copilot that are out there. There's well, with Windows, the, you know, the Windows operating system, Windows Server. There's Microsoft 365, which is the the Office solution, and then there's the Microsoft Dynamics 365. The Dynamics, of course, is like the customer, the um, CRM tools, the customer relationship management tools that are out there. Windows and Copilot. With Microsoft Windows, the, the Copilot is automatically part of Windows. Now, the, the way it works is it works a lot like the features of Bing. If you ever use the Bing search tool and you type it in, sometimes if you scroll, you'll get that thing that'll pop down and it'll say stop recording and it has all the different questions on there that based on what your search is. It's kind of what the Windows uses to do that, to help you search through your, your operating system or your, or your servers. You don't need to be logged into Microsoft Online Services to use Copilot if it's on a desktop-based service. And these things can do the the good the benefit of that is you can use Copilot to help with some of the settings. Say that you're looking to, you know, do sound settings, you know, do a microphone or something. The thing I've found a lot of times with Cop with um Windows is Windows changes a lot of times the the management of using like the display settings. You know, they move it and around and it always seems to go when it goes goes off or you're adding a new um, device, you can't use that display. It's kind of hard to find it and get that. The, this co-pilot will help you search and help you find the things on there just by using the simple phrases of what you want to use. And it'll show you the tools that are out there. The thing to note is, although it's free now, Microsoft may change the charge for this in the future. They've done this in the past with some of the other tools and features Microsoft has. The problem with that is if you're using the free solution, you go to a new version of Windows or you know, Windows Server or Desktop, and you start using those, you may have end users that activate this and start using it, which can make you non-compliant and can have a, a licensing issue with you that you didn't even know was there. You know, because, hey, it was, it was free in the past. We're using it now. Now there's, you get an audit from Microsoft and now you find out there's a cost associated with it that you weren't budgeted for. Microsoft 365 and Copilot. When we look at the, the um, 365, it's an add-on subscription, Copilot, to the Microsoft 365 subscriptions. So you have a Microsoft 365, you have your Office, you know, your PowerPoint, Word, all that into one uh, solution you're using. You want to use Copilot with that. With that, the reason you may use it is it does allow some easier access to some of the different 365 tools that are out there. Um, I've seen it demoed where people have used it for, let's say, like Excel. You want to do like a VLOOKUP to go across multiple tabs or different spreadsheets. You can use the um, Microsoft Copilot to tell it what you want to do, and it'll help you create the code and the and the term and the things you need to do to to make that work. Rather than having to look up online, maybe how to use a VLOOKUP tool and how to use the different uh, search solutions on that it can make it a lot easier for your end users. And it also allows your end users to create to generate tasks and and content. For, with, the, with the Microsoft 365. And again, it uses the various tools that Microsoft 365 offers. So the good thing is if you're using the Microsoft 365 Copilot option, you know it'll work with everything that's in there with Microsoft. And when you if you design it, say you want to design an application with it, you can do that and it'll work with the other, the other tools out there. Now, the Copilot right now Microsoft, it, you know, it's very basic and not going to say basic in its solution, but it's in the, still in the beginning stages. It seems to have a lot of promise, seems to be really good right now, some of the things it offers. And Microsoft is also saying they have stated that they're going to add additional features to help produce the functionality, tie it in with other Microsoft products, and just make that value a little better. Uh, currently, the Microsoft Copilot is around $30 per user per month. We've had some customers look at that and say, you know, that's, hey, that's kind of high for something that's kind of a, a new solution or a new offering from a, a publisher. But that's the price um, Microsoft's going with. And the thing to remember is the co-pilot cost is in addition to any 365, Microsoft 365 plans you may have. So if you have a Microsoft 365 E5 plan or an E3 plan or, you know, any of the others on there, depending on what you need, you have to remember that $30 is going to be on top of the, the Microsoft 365 solution you currently are using. The Microsoft 
copilot copyright commitment. I like to just throw this up that if you're using if you're using the copilot as far as um, some of the AI and and some other uh, issues out there, Microsoft has committed that they're going to be working with uh, copyrights, so you don't have to worry about people stealing like your data or maybe if you're if it the copilot you create. You don't have to worry about it using somebody else's data, you know, and you get a letter in the mail from that saying, hey, you're using our stuff here. And it's, you know, you don't have to worry about that, um, that potential legal issue. There is some detailed information if you want. I have the link is here, right here. If you want that, feel free to reach out to us. I'll be more than happy to send it to, you, to anybody. And it just kind of covers Microsoft's commitment to that on there as, as far as working with that uh, product. Things to consider uh, with with the Copilot again is although Copilot is free, remember Microsoft may charge for that uh, in the future. There's also some some other things to look at. Any changes to your Microsoft 365 subscription can cause cost increases. You know, it, uh, it's with the Copilot itself, it's going to be a thirty dollar uh, increase on that, and it can potentially open up users to uh, non-compliance. So you have the the Copilot. You have users that are that are activating that, that are using some of the tools. What may happen is somebody activates something else with, within Microsoft 365. Somebody requests it, and you may have a group that says, okay, we'll activate this. The problem is once that gets activated, and if people start using it, Microsoft's going to ask for that money. They're going to ask for the billing for that particular solution that's there. And with that, it you know, just this something that can cause a headache down the road that you may not expect. We've experienced that quite a bit of customers. Um, the one thing I, like, I want to point out on here as well is when Microsoft and other publishers really push the subscription models, one of the things that they really like to say is, hey, it really simplifies the licensing. It simplifies how you're going to use it. You know, you don't have to worry about being non-compliant anymore. It's not true. In fact, there, I've seen a lot of areas where customers have been, there's more issues. There's more concerns there of more cost issues that may be there because once you activate it, it's not like before where you may have to have people download it and create a desktop image. Now you have the potential of people activating it and all of your users are using it because they click on something and it's downloaded. The other issue with that is, is really understanding what you're buying. We've had customers that have bought some of these solutions and they weren't really explained really detailed of why they bought the particular solution, uh, the subscription. It was told, hey, here's how you get into an enterprise agreement. Sign this and you know we'll move on. And with that, we've come across customers that we were able to tell them, hey, you didn't have to buy that. You could have bought this particular solution that's a lot cheaper. And even if it's the cost that you're looking at now, it's really important to know why you're spending what you're spending and what you're getting with what you're spending. That's one of the uh, biggest things I always like to do is make sure that knowledge is the biggest thing with you. You know why you're spending money, you know where you're spending it, and you know if, why, if there's any, any concerns or if there's any particular cost savings that could be out there. And if you didn't take advantage of them, why, we, why you chose not to. Again, it's very important as you're going through this is just to remember some of these, um, um, the, these points. The other thing is subscription licensing is getting more and more complex. So you want to make sure that you have a license management system in place. You know, the Microsoft and publishers have pushed software asset management for years on customers setting up a management way to, that can be to protect yourself. Now with subscription licensing, with the complexity of it, it's very easy. We've also run into some of the complexity of customers double buying or triple buying licenses. You buy a particular thing, you see another solution, you buy that. You know, think of when you buy for your home usage. How many times have you maybe seen somebody buy you know, a subscription to a streaming service, and then they go through with someone else and that particular person offers it. You know, you're, you're double buying that that thing. Um, it may, that an example for home use, but it, it definitely can be for uh, corporate use. And the problem with corporate is when you do that, it's not a simple thing of an $8 uh, subscription license for, you know, one time. It can be hundreds or thousands that are out there and you're looking at costs that you could, you're spending that you don't need to, that you could spend elsewhere in your in your organization. As we're going through, what I like to do, what I like to cover is as we're, after we kind of hit the co-pilot, is hit some of the Microsoft uh, end of year, the end of the Microsoft fiscal year that's coming up. The fiscal year is in June. The thing to know is you as an organization, if you have any, any big purchases you're looking at, if you're looking at any true ups, any agreement renewals, even if the agreement renewal is past June, let's say it's in July, August, September, and it's going past there, 
knowing when the Microsoft fiscal year is ending can be very vital. Microsoft, a lot of times, depending on the rep, may want to close things early. You may be able to get some deals on an agreement that's not even ending in June. As I said, if it's going past there, we've had a lot of customers that thought, oh, my agreement's not in June. I can't take advantage of it. It's not the case. We've had that quite a bit. If you're looking at a purchase as well, we can help you work with Microsoft at the different teams within Microsoft. Most people don't know how to work with the different groups, say the SQL group, the Windows teams. All those can have money that you can take advantage of and can help you with an agreement or a purchase you're looking at. Uh, here at Miro, I've helped at, I've helped customers with that a lot, and they've gotten a lot of discounts on things that they, that they were told by sale, the Microsoft or the reseller sales team wasn't out there by just working with some of the other teams because these teams don't always communicate with each other. They all have their individual silos, and by not communicating, here's another advantage you can take advantage of by working with them and reaching out to them because they're not always um, asked for that money. Because of the end of the year, they may have extra money that they need to get rid of. You know, they need to spend that in order to get that same amount or more the next year. So here again, how is we can really um, help you there? The other thing to know is the different groups may have dates within their organization, within the you know Microsoft organization. They may have different um, financial goals to work with. And having you know having a partner like such as Miro here to understand how that's signed, how that when the contracts are signed, and how to take advantage of the best pricing solutions for you, you know, can it sounds simple, but we've had customers save you know twenty, thirty percent sometimes, and even getting some extra value dollars to use with um to like uh, solutions within your organization to help you help a help a save costing on um a change in your organization. Some things to look at, there are some servers that are in entering extended support. Uh, July 9 of this year, uh, SQL Server 2014 will be joining the end of life cycle stage. There also will be extended security updates um, that will be available, but it's going to be costly, except especially for like SQL Server Enterprise. You know, you, you can still get some of these tools. It's not Microsoft's not going to be randomly reduce, uh, producing these um, solutions. You can still get it, but you have to pay for it. Microsoft pretty much creates a, they claim they create a custom solution for you for that tool, but to do it, you know, there's there's money that's gonna be paid. Um, upgrading can um, help, can help. If you talk to Microsoft, they always tell you, well, just upgrade. The problem is that's not always the case, you know, and if you're not gonna upgrade, what are some of your potential licensing issues or even security issues that are there? you know, to look at, you know, you maybe have to, if it's a server out there, maybe you can lock it down, prevent it from getting um, online access. So you don't have to worry about maybe somebody hacking into it. The other thing to know is I know a lot of things like hospitals have a lot of older software because you have things like MRI machines and you have these very, you know, several million dollar expensive equipment out there that uses older software and they can't upgrade. If you upgrade, you'll have to buy a new one. So here again is to understand if you're using this to know the extended support, how these security things will work, and how to use it as far as your licensing goes, to use that to help your organization either save or you know use Microsoft to kind of help you with that if there's any any kind of a conflict or any type of thing you're looking at internally. Some other servers um, in, um, ending support. Windows Server 2016 is out of mainstream support that's entered um, into extended. Windows Server 2019 support that ended 1.9 and SQL Server mainstream support ends, it ended in, uh, it's gonna end in uh, February 28th of 2025. So next year. So here again, you know, it's really important to know that these things are out there, that this is this, to prepare for it when it goes. If you can upgrade, you know, it's always good maybe to upgrade before the um, extended goes. If you can't, to know how you're going to manage that as far as um, updates go, and as far as maybe taking advantage of you know, working with Microsoft to get these support updates. Um, here again, with Mira, we have been able to help customers with, with some of these areas if they have any, uh, an enterprise agreement or some of these other agreements to get some, some of these updates and maybe work on Microsoft to give you a solution that's maybe not as expensive as it was at one point because you, maybe you're looking at a new agreement, because you're looking at a new true up. You know, Microsoft always wants to give that money, they may not always want to give discounts, but if they can discount another portion of their agreements, if they can discount another area that's not showing a reduction of cost on their product, that's how Microsoft can view that a lot of times on their on the end. So how to, how to know that, um, how to work with that is, is really important. Okay, some takeaways. Um, remember some 
Copilot, um, Microsoft Copilot, the, the versions out there for, you know, the Windows or the um, Office, they're changing. In some cases, it's going to be faster than the other. Uh, Microsoft really, they've committed to creating it, but it's not, I would say, if anything, they're probably going to be creating probably the Office because they're making money on that. Um, the Windows, they'll be adding to that and changing it. So it's really important to keep up and know how the changes may affect you. Remember again, Copilot's generally free for Windows, but on-premise, if you have on-premise users, you should be looking for um, Microsoft charging as well as auditing use. You know, the one thing to look at is if you're using Copilot, you know, understand how is it, how is it going to affect your organization? Is it going to be, are you using some of these tools out there that are free? Remember, it is on Azure. So Microsoft, they claim they don't, but is it possible they could be tracking your usage of it? And if they look at that, hey, this person's using Copilot a lot. This person's using uh, these other tools a lot internally in their organization. Maybe they have some software out there that they haven't purchased. And bang, there goes the, um, the audit trigger with Microsoft. Some of these things can be, I've, before I worked at Mirror, I worked at a reseller. And I can tell you, there's a lot of things out there that they look at that they don't always claim that they do, that can give, that can trigger an audit with you. Mainly it's Microsoft use that as easy money. You know, if you're using it, they figure they can, they know they can come after you. They can tell you, you have to purchase it. So it's really good to prepare yourself before you use any type of Microsoft solution, any type of software, whether it's free or pay to understand what the potential issues down the road may be and just to get ready. Another thing that I always like to tell customers on, even though Microsoft had that copyright um, thing on there, even though they may tell you, hey, this is good, you're protected under this. With anything else you do with Microsoft or really any type of you know, uh, decision, it's really important to get your, your legal department to look at it. Have them understand it, have them review it, so you can prepare with them to understand where you're going. Some other takeaways, remember, Microsoft's fiscal year end, it can, and if you have EA renewals, enterprise agreement renewals, or support renewals, all these things can be used if it's before of June, but it's not necessarily have to end in June. It can be later. And again, we've had customers that were able to commit to doing an EA earlier or commit to signing an EA, and they were able to get discounting because the Microsoft rep that wasn't hitting their number. They need to get the revenue in, so they want to close it out before the fiscal year end. Some other thing is um, extended security updates. Remember, th these are changing for Windows and SQL. And just to understand how these are going to change, how these are going to affect your, um, how they can affect your organization. And the big thing is, you know, we can help you go through these. The, you know, the last thing you want is a surprise uh, with uh, licensing. You know, whether that surprise is you, you are under license and now you have to audit it, or that surprise being that you spent twice as much as you had to on something. And, so, you know, um, the organization discovers this and it's like, wow, we spent this money. We didn't have to. Why did we do it? So it's really good to have somebody here at Miro where we don't care what you buy. We don't resell Microsoft. So it's really good. You know, when, when, you, when we go through it, we're going to give you the, the true solution on it. We're going to show you what it is and, and your decision on that's going to be yours. But it's really important to understand where you are and especially deciding to be prepared for a potential audit with Microsoft. And I'll jump in real quick just to mention uh, the resellers we find are well, pretty much the number one cause of Microsoft audits. Uh, anything from the reseller telling Microsoft to audit the organization, uh, uh, but much more frequently, uh, we find that a lot of times the reseller sells an organization the wrong licenses. And not only is it, oh, you know, they're buying all these licenses that they didn't need or they could have gotten a lot cheaper because the reseller didn't bother to even ask what they wanted the license for. Just buying that weird set of licenses alone was enough to trigger Microsoft to audit one of our clients. Uh, and that type of thing we find all the time. That was just recently. And we find that over and over again between the relationship between the reseller and their client. And they, they almost seem like they work for Microsoft. They don't really work for the people they're reselling licenses to. And like Vince alluded to, uh, the more they sell, the more money they make. Uh, so they're very inclined to sell you the most licenses, the most expensive licenses, et cetera. Uh, and then they might even dump you in an audit because of it. Uh, so just want to put that out there real quick before Vince, you can go ahead and finish this up. Okay. And then um, I just wanted to add, Sean, from what you said, it's really important to know that I've seen customers, when they've had an enterprise agreement, maybe they've had an agreement through several cycles um, through on there. Um, it's 
there has been times where the one particular cycle, the customer had bought something that they shouldn't have, or it was a particular licensing didn't match how they were using it. And then as that agreement keeps getting renewed, the reseller doesn't always notice it. They kind of want to do the easiest thing. Let's sign this and move on. Same thing with Microsoft. You know, oh, let's not worry about the agreement. You're, you want to keep everything as is, move on. The problem is you've been spending money throughout these, throughout, um, these times, especially if you're double buying licensing. Or if you're um, under licensed, you have Microsoft that finally looks at that because this particular rep or the audit team wants to make money and they go through the agreements, they see something, hey, this looks this looks interesting. Why is, the, why is the customer buying this particular license and not this one? And boom, there goes the audit. And you know, you think a lot of customers think, hey, I've had this enterprise agreement for years, I'm safe. Not the case. It's really these audit teams, they, as I said earlier, they want to make money. It's easy money for them, it's low hanging fruit, and they see it as um, potential um, things out there to, to go through. And then we have, of course, um, Sean, did you want to cover this? Uh, sure. So what we have to help you with this type of uh, problem uh, is we do a managed services. So essentially what we do is we make sure you are in compliance all the time. Uh, we help you keep track of what you're changing. We advise you on what you might purchase, how you might save money. In fact, that's usually the first thing we do is advise our clients, oh, we can do a couple of things here and save a significant portion of your on your costs. Uh, but most of all, it's a peace of mind. We keep you in compliance. Uh, and if your team has questions regarding like, oh, what if we set up a server like this? What would we need? What if we did virtualization like this? We can come in and let you know if you're compliant right off the bat. And you don't have to wait until Microsoft audits you to find out you're way out of compliance and owe them a whole lot of money you didn't plan on spending. Um, and the way we do that is we go in and we look at your licensing situation more or less like as if we were Microsoft. Uh, we look at all the same things in all the same places, uh, and we can give you that report ahead of time and say, hey, you guys, this is the this is the areas where you have potential concerns. This is where you're OK. Uh, and that way you can take care of it, get the licensings you need without buying anything you don't. And that's how we help our clients just in a general sort of sense with their Microsoft licensing. Vince? Thanks, Sean. Yes. And as Sean said, you know, it's it's really good to know how these work. And just to, again, be prepared uh, for your Microsoft um, that's out there. Be prepared that you know what's out there. And, you know, we're here to help you. We're here to help with your solution. And we're here to help make sure that, you know, your purchasing is correct and that you're properly licensed and you're ready for an audit. If you have any questions in the meantime, you can please type them into the question box uh, and we will answer them as they come in. Uh, if otherwise, uh, if that was all you're here for, thank you very much for uh, attending our webinar. Uh, if you want to contact us with questions you might have about your situation, you can contact us online at miroconsulting.com. You can email us at info at miroconsulting.com, uh, or you can reach us by dialing 732-738-8511, uh, extension 1208. Again, thank you for coming. Uh, this ends the webinar. Have a great day.